In today's video, we're going to go over how to reset the immobilizer in any Lexus or Toyota ECU to accept new keys. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. My name is Ben and welcome to the channel. So if you guys have been following my build for the last six months or so, I bought this IS300 Sport Cross with the intent of converting it to manual, building a motor and boosting it eventually one day. Uh, and over the last six months, I've just been collecting different parts. So recently I picked up this manual ECU from one of these guys on these Facebook forums and he gave me a pretty good deal for it. So I had to hop on it. It didn't come with a key and it didn't come with any kind of history or anything. I just figured it was pretty cheap, so I just got it. My original intent on getting it was to go through the whole process of uh, seeding it using the Lexus code and uh, text stream to try to get a key program to it. But after I did some research about the immobilizer, I discovered that I had an EEPROM in it, which I could program using a $10 Amazon programmer that I bought. So in today's video, we'll go over how to use a $10 Amazon programmer to virginize this ECU so it can accept new keys or your existing keys. So before we get started, I'm gonna take apart these ECU ECUs that I have. I've got the auto and the manual one. So it's pretty easy to take these apart. You just got six screws to take apart. So. so we got all the screws off. So you just pull the ECU out and just put the case off to the side. The ECU is pretty sealed up as far as the flux goes. It's not all the shiny stuff on here. So what we're gonna find is the IC900 chip. So the IC900 chip is right here on this board right here. So this is very easy to access. So you, what you have to do is clean off the flux on there and so you can get the clip on there to read the chip. So I went ahead and took apart the manual ECU off camera. And you could tell this is the manual ECU, this is the automatic one. And the biggest difference is right here on the manual, it's missing all the transistors and the chips, like right here, that control the transmission, solenoids and everything. So that's what's the biggest difference here that's missing versus the automatic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape little pins on here with like a, just a little razor blade so I can have my electrical contact. When I clip the chip, the flux on here is not as pliable and soft as the flux that we found on the cluster when you guys saw my cluster video it's actually easier it's like a, it's more like a clear coat on here so what you want to do is just scrape the edges so when we get the clip on it's a good electrical contact with these Good enough, I'm gonna go try to clip it and read the chip. So in order to read the chip, the EEPROM on this, we're gonna have to use this uh, CH341 uh, USB serial reader board. I bought this for like 10 bucks on Amazon and, and if you guys wanna learn how to set this up on my previous cluster video, I actually went through and explained what I had to do to get this work on the automotive components. So check out that video on my cluster uh, reprogramming to get a little insight on that. I also have some links in the description to some different resources that you can go to to set up this board. It's not plug and play out of the box. It's pretty easy to set up if you're geeky enough to figure it out, but I explained it in that video and I'll, I might end up just making a separate dedicated video on how to set one of these up and show you the actual details and setting it up. But until then, you can check out that previous video. But what you do is you just plug this into here and then we have this onboard clip right here. This is an eight pin clip and you just clip the chip and once you clip it, you plug up the USB and you read it. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So now I've got my automatic ECU ready. So what you wanna do is you wanna find the dot on the eight pin EEPROM on the chip and that matches with the red line on this chip clip. So you just line it up and just clip the chip. So right now I've got it clipped. I've got my board, it says power and run on it. So hopefully that read right. So we're in the computer now and AS programmer can do is you can either detect the chip if you want them to figure it out. So it's a 93C56. So you can just select that chip or you can go up to IC microwire 
and then choose your chip. So these are 16-bit chips that are used into Toyota ECUs. So what we wanna do is just read the IC. So I just read the IC and I just got all this information here. So I'll, I'll go through this and I'll actually highlight all these bits and I'll explain to you guys what everything means. So what we wanna do is just save this to the desktop. ECU immobilizer. So we wanna save it there. So that's, this is my ECU right now for my car with all my keys that are programmed to the car. Click out of this. So now I'll go ahead and read the manual ECU. So I've got my manual ECU. I'm just gonna do the same thing. Just line up the pen, make sure it gets a nice secure clip. And then go into the computer. So we're in the computer now and we're in the same program. So I'm just gonna read what's on this chip. This is a manual ECU I bought online. It looks like there's only one key in here, which is programmed in three different locations on this. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you guys what everything means on all this stuff and how you can either program your old keys onto your new ECU or you can reset all the keys and then just make this a virgin ECU again so you can program brand new keys. So here's a quick little overview of the Lexus Toyota engine immobilizer. So what happens when you stick your key in the car is this ignition ring up here sends the code from your key to the transponder key amplifier. This amplifier actually decodes that hex inside your key, sends it to the ECU. The ECU then sends it to the IC900 chip, which is the 93C56 EEPROM. Inside that EEPROM is where all your key codes are stored. So you have your master key one, two, and then your valley keys and any other keys that you have in there. So that's pretty simple, straightforward communication. Your ECU is just verifying that your key matches the key that's programmed into there and it does it's all one-way communications. So taking a look at that original dump that I took out of my car, I've got what I suspect is six keys programmed to my car, which I don't know how I have six keys. I thought there was only a four key limit. It must be four valet keys and four master keys from what I know. Uh, I'm assuming all these are the different key codes. I'm not sure which ones are valet or which one's master. We'll test that later and see where we're at. So I know up here, this is key one, 6E6205CD. That one's key one because my other ECU has the same key in the same location. I'm assuming this is key two, key three, key four, and then five and six down here. So what else you have on here, I've got some unknown bytes over here, which is all this FF. And then we have the virginized key bytes, which there's three of the bytes right here. When those are set that the computer has keys programmed to it. So those are something that you have to reset it. If you want to clear the mobilizer and the ECU, this right here is the key counter, which is in an inverse hex. So an F9 in inverse hex is actually six. I'll show you a little table of the hex uh, readouts and you can see that inverse hex equals uh, zero six, which is an F9. And then down here, the DF, FB, 695A is the valet key lockout, which if you set this to zero, that means only one valet key can be programmed. So you always wanna leave it at this value. So moving over here, we're looking at the manual ECU with one key that I dumped. So you can see right there, that's got the only key that's programmed into here in that spot. Everywhere else on this code is all zero. And if you look at the virginized bits, they're the same as zero, one, zero, one. And then you have the key counter as an FE. So FE and inverse hex is zero, one, which is one key, which matches the one key up here. And then down here, you have the same valet key lockout. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually gonna dump my EEPROM into the manual ECU, and then we'll go test it on the car to see if it starts my car using my keys. So we're back in the ECU now. So what I wanna do is pull up my auto immobilizer bin that I had dumped earlier. I've got that there. I wanna make sure I read the chip so the chip is right. So I wanna select that IC. I wanna write this to the manual ECU. So, so that was a success. So I wanna verify it. It's pulling it. Then I wanna just do a quick read so it is successful. So now I have just programmed all my keys to the manual ECU. So this should start the car 
just with my keys now without doing anything else other than sticking this into the car and putting my keys into to start it. All right, so we're out in the car. Got the manual ECU here. I didn't put the rest of the brackets in, but. So we'll go on the side of the car and check this out. All right, so I'm in the car. So I've got one key here. I've got my other key here. So first thing we're gonna do is just stick it in and see if the security light stops. So the security light stops, so that's a good sign. So everything's on. Ooh, started up perfectly fine. So we're gonna try the other key now. So security light stopped. Yeah, works perfectly fine. So we're back in here and I pulled up the manual ECU with the one key program to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go reset this to zeros so that way I can put this baby into auto programming mode. So I'm gonna set everything to zero in here. Just reset the three locations for the key and then we'll go down here and we'll reset the virginized ECU bits to zero. For the key counter, we wanna set that to FF. FF means no keys. And then these FFs over here, these unknowns, I'm gonna go ahead and just clear all these out. I'm not sure what they are. We're gonna leave down here the DFFV695A for the valet key lockout. And we're gonna save this as. So now that it was a success on starting the car with the manual ECU using my keys without doing anything but dumping it, what I wanna do now is I wanna experiment and reset this ECU back to factory setting so I can actually program my own keys and then wipe all those other useless keys that I don't have. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I've got my ECU on the table clipped in. I wanna pull up my reset that I had done earlier. So now I'm just gonna program this to the ECU. That's a success, I'll read that. It's fine, I'll clear the buffer just to make sure and then I'll read it again. And we're good there, so we'll go out and test this in the car now. All right, here's the keys I got right here. So I've got my two original keys here. I've got this remote that I found at the junkyard. I put it in a new case, that thing still works. I put a fresh battery in it. And this is the same key shank I found on that key at the junkyard. I also have this little mobilizer chip. I'm not sure if it's a 4C chip, which is what this car uses. But I'm going to try to program that as the valet key to see if that takes. After I do these two as the master and this one as the valet, I'm going to try to program this and I'll see where they store all these different codes in this car. So one of the procedures to go into here and program the keys is to lock. Make sure all your doors are closed. You want to lock your door, then unlock it get inside and then we'll start programming. So we're inside the car, doors are all closed, so have all your keys ready. The car is expecting three keys at this point. If you're doing one key, you could probably stop after the first thing and just shut it off and let the computer give up and exit programming mode, but initially it's gonna expect three keys. So we're gonna put in our first key, our first master key in here. We just stick it in, don't do anything, just watch the security light. It should stay on, and once it programs, usually once it goes on, it might have read it already, so it's programmed. So you pull that one out, you put your next key in there. It's blinking. I think it caught that one. The last key I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try that one key I found in the junkyard uh, that I put in the new case. I just have a shank that doesn't turn my key, so I'm gonna stick this thing in there just to program that baby. And then I'm assuming that worked because it didn't blink or anything and it's solid. Uh, you should wait like 30 seconds and it should leave the programming mode. So this one is where I don't know what happens, like how you actually exit it because right now the light is still solid which means it's in programming mode. So just to check, I'm gonna test my key that I already programmed in there. I'm gonna see if it starts the car. So that comes on. I'll take that out. I'll stick the second key in that I programmed is blinking. So it starts the car. I'm gonna try one more. I'm gonna take my valet key's guts out and put it in my other shank and I'll see if it turns. So I've got the key blank out, I'll put it in there and I'll take that other one I have, which I programmed and I'll see if it turns. 
So it does work. So right now the light is staying on. So I'm not sure why it's staying in programming mode. I read somewhere where it might take hours or weeks for this thing to just give up on programming and then go into regular mode. So I'll just leave it alone and I'll see what happens in the morning uh, with this thing still connected to the car. And so it didn't take a couple hours just right when I turned off. I had this other, that little transponder chip and that thing is programmed as the valet key for now. So that's weird. So I'm gonna go dump this ECU and see what's in here. So we're inside the ECU again and I just dumped that new program that I just did. So it looks like the first two keys, which is the 2A key and the 07 key match the last two keys that were programmed to my car. So I'm assuming they lost the keys at some point and programmed two new master keys to my car. So that's why these are the final two keys that were found in the original dump. And then I put that third key where I programmed in there and it looks like that's the 76 key. So the 76 key is in that third key position right now. And that's the junkyard key I found. And then that fourth key that I have, which happens to be in the valet key position at the end of 04 and beginning of 05 line is that last transponder, that random uh, transponder I had. So it looks like that one got programmed as a valet key. So for some reason, my car was expecting three master keys and a valet, which might make sense because I think this car came with two master keys, the wallet key, which I think is considered a master key, and then the valet key itself at the end. So that maybe my particular car wanted four keys. Anyway, so that looks correct. It looks like the, the key counter counted up to FB. FB is four keys. And then you got the, the virginized bits that were set to zero one, which means that it's out of auto programming mode, which is what we kind of saw. We don't see those random FFs over here, which apparently I guess those don't do anything. Other than that, everything looks good here. And I think this programming was a success. Hey guys, I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. As you can see, I got a little bit technical, showed you guys everything you needed to know about the immobilizer on this Lexus IS300 ECU. It does end up needing three master keys just because I forgot about that whole card key, which counts as a master key also. That kind of screwed me up for a little bit there trying to figure that out, but eventually I figured it out and we got to program three masters and a valet key to make it four total keys to do the programming correctly and uh, have this thing cycled through. I think if you just program one key, you just keep on moving with it and going with it. And after a couple hours, the ECU just gives up. But anyways, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel already for all the different DIY stuff I do and all the different technical stuff I do, uh, go ahead and subscribe to your channel. Now, anytime I learn something new about these cars, I'm gonna go ahead and just post this so all you guys can do this stuff yourself or at least attempt to do this stuff yourself. If not, you can always just leave comments in my videos and I try to answer them as much as possible. And if you actually need this stuff done, just let me know. I might be able to find some time to help some people out and, and get you a master key or two program to your ECUs. Anyways, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys next time.